At that time, the flight test program was still going on. But initial problems of engine failure had been solved. Confidence in the aircraft was so high and the need for it so pressing that it was put into service before tests were complete. The first production aircraft was supplied to the Kubinka Air Regiment, located about 40 miles west of Moscow. For almost 50 years, NATO has assigned code names to new Soviet aircraft as they appear. Soviet aircraft manufacturers and the Soviet Air Force have followed them with interest. Some, like the Frogfoot tag assigned to the Su-25, they found offensive. But the MiG-29's designers accepted the NATO name Fulcrum with pleasure. Russians use it as the aircraft's standard nickname. A two-seater trainer version of the MiG-29, the MiG-29UB, was manufactured in the city of Gorky, 200 miles east of Moscow, where both the MiG-25 and 31 were produced. The Mikoyan Design Bureau won an important Soviet award for the MiG-29. Under the Soviet system of incentives for high-quality work, the government allocated money to build apartment houses for Mikoyan employees. About 200 families were given new apartments. In 1984, Mikoyan's chief test pilot, Alexander Fyodotov, was killed when he was forced to eject at high altitude after his engine exploded. He was succeeded by Valery Minitsky, who had been his partner throughout the test program of the MiG-29. In 1988, a group of Mikoyan test pilots had an experience unique in Soviet aviation. They were given the job of taking these top secret, deadly Soviet fighters to the West and showing them off to the rest of the world. MiG-29s had already been seen in the West once, but by a limited audience. Since 1974, there had been a traditional exchange visit of Soviet aircraft to Finland. In 1986, six MiG-29As visited a Finnish airbase and showed off their aerobatic capabilities to an audience of Western observers. The 1988 expedition was to a much larger forum, the Farnborough Air Show in England. Mikoyan pilots Anatoly Kvotchur, Roman Taskayev, and Yuri Yermakov were chosen to fly a MiG 29A single seater and a MiG 29 UB trainer to England via Wittstock in East Germany. It was a major step for the Russians. They would, in effect, be competing against the top Western manufacturers of fighter aircraft. And the aircraft they were flying, though new to the West, were designed in the 1970s. Taskayev, Kvotchur, and Yermakov took off on the last leg of their trip to England and were escorted into British airspace by tornadoes of the Royal Air Force.
For pilots from a country with a reputation for secrecy, the Russians impressed aviation journalists and the public with their openness and direct, friendly manner. The MiG-29 also impressed the Farnborough crowd and caused a great deal of comment and controversy among rival fighter manufacturers. There were claims and counterclaims about whose aircraft was superior, but there was no doubt that the Russian pilot stole the show with routines that demonstrated the extreme maneuverability of the MiG. Aviation experts and laymen made the most of the opportunity of seeing state-of-the-art Soviet aircraft at close quarters. Given the intensity of Soviet relationships with the West in the post-war years, it was extraordinary to see an American General Dynamics F-16 parked right next to its Soviet rival. Discovery Wings Channel. There are two aerobatic teams in the Soviet Air Force, both based at Kubinka, outside Moscow. These pilots are the Swifts. They fly MiG-29s. The other team is the Russian Knights. They fly Sukhoi 27s. The Swifts fly a mixture of single and two-seater MiGs, generally in a group of six, with a seventh aircraft flying solo. The Swifts were formed by volunteer operational pilots performing formation aerobatics in their spare time. Only relatively recently did they receive aircraft exclusively for aerobatic use, painted in their own color scheme. Kubinka has always been the Soviet headquarters for formation flying and aerobatics. It's also a showplace where foreign delegations have come in the past to see the best of Soviet aviation. These days, Kubinka holds regular air shows that are open to the public. The standard of flying the audience sees is very high indeed. Past Soviet aerobatic teams have used MiG-17s and MiG-21s. Pilots of the Swifts say that the MiG-29 is the best precise formation aerobatic aircraft they have flown. Western pilots who have flown the MiG-29 say it achieves much the same performance as Western fighters equipped with fly-by-wire control systems. They say the higher thrust-to-weight ratio of the MiG and some superior design points make that possible. 